The following story was published on December 25, 1983, in the Eureka Times Standard newspaper, where the author Karen Luttrell Langdon was a reporter. Despite the original newsprint now being yellowed with age, the spirit of the story remains unchanged. Only minor edits have been made to aid the transition from written text to spoken word. And now, I Was a Female Santa Claus, by Karen Luttrell Langdon. Three-year-old Stephanie, candy cane in hand, toddled back to a familiar pant leg and said, That was a girl Santa Claus, Daddy. Humbug, you scoff. There's no such thing as a girl Santa Claus. Well, hold on to your Christmas kerchief, or cap, because this past Monday, I was a female Santa. Some women aspire to become great doctors, scientists, or movie stars, but for as long as I can remember, visions of being Santa have danced in my head. This year, with the aid of Daly's Department Store, a pillow, and such bold to bashful believers as Josh, Tara, James, Toby, Shauna, and Matthew, my fondest Christmas wish came true. All mortal to immortal transformations must begin somewhere, and in my case, it was in the women's restroom. After piece by piecing myself together in the royal reds of Father Christmas, stuffing my stomach, slipping on the beard, and finally stepping into Santa's boots, a merry sense of responsibility swelled in me when upon entering the store, a wide-eyed youngster turned round to exclaim, Santa Claus! And so, comfortably seated at my Santa station in the children's department, I began the duty of finding out who was naughty or nice. Believe it or not, everyone was nice. Small visitors, some too young to speak, exchanged smiles for candy canes, while tall persons offered a friendly, Merry Christmas, Santa. Some children came packaged for their seasonal visit, dressed in holiday frills, each hair in place, and poised with polite, polished requests. Others, flaunting expertise in the matter, easily maneuvered themselves on and off Santa's knee and, task completed, roamed on about their business without a backward glance. Most babies preferred their mother's arms to mine, and even big boys and girls were hesitant to sit on Santa's lap. But I'm proud to have been 11-month-old Tara's first-ever Santa. No tears! And to have completed three hours of Christmas duty with dry knees and still intact curly white beard. Being an old-fashioned Santa, it was comforting to hear that Barbie, G.I. Joe, fire engines, and rocking horses have retained wish popularity in the age of Star Wars and video games. And even more comforting, I was pleased to learn that seven-year-olds are not too old to sit on Santa's lap. And while old Saint Nick would not dream of choosing favorites, my mortal heart could not help but be touched by a few especially sweet incidents. One polite youngster, for instance, wished more than anything for a mama kitty. And a five-year-old named Shauna hand-delivered a letter which said only, I love you, Santa. Nod after nod confirmed, Yes, I've been good all year. And everyone unselfishly promised to leave Santa plenty of cookies and milk to tide him over during Christmas Eve deliveries. I'll be sure to leave some carrots for Rudolph one little boy said. I'll be looking for him. In addition to having a jolly personality, an important part of being Santa is making quick deliveries and not just of presents. Do you eat all the candy canes that are left in your bag? One young friend asked. Ho, ho, ho! I answered affirmatively, patting my padding. Where are your reindeer? Another inquired. They're at the North Pole, resting for Christmas Eve, I said. But the one thing no one questioned me about during three hours of being Santa was the fact that I was a woman. Any thoughts I'd held of disguising my femaleness were quickly squelched when I heard Stephanie, the first toddler to sit on my lap, tell her dad, That was a girl Santa! Time and time again, parents' eyes lit with surprise, but not disapproval, as they realized this Santa is a woman and tried not to let on. 
Go ahead and sit on her, er, I mean, his lap, one mother said. Most of the children didn't need to be told, however. They seemed to know instinctively. And initially, this failure at deception worried me. Maybe the kids will be disappointed, I thought. But the more children I talked with, the greater my realization. It doesn't matter. The most important thing the children taught me is the spirit of Santa Claus, not the gender of the person underneath the pretty suit. And so, long after my whisker burns and backache have faded, those seven-year-olds are heavy, with the spirit of St. Nick still in me, I say sincerely, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night.